Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Sone. Today we're going to be talking about the law of conservation of momentum and doing a few examples. So essentially the law of conservation of momentum is like the Newton's third law that things tend to not like to change their movement and therefore their momentum. And that means that the initial momentum will equal the final momentum of said object. Um, but more importantly, it deals with collision. So I got a quick little picture for you here. If balls A and B were coming towards each other, whew, going towards each other, and then they hit each other, they would then bounce backwards in opposite directions. And those opposite directions would match, if there is no friction, the momentum that they had to begin with. Okay, so another formula that I like to use, and one that I feel like is even more useful, is that the net momentum of the mass of one times the velocity of block one, or ball one, added with the mass of ball two with the velocity of ball two, which is essentially if you add your momentums together because they're going in opposite directions, it must equal zero. All right, so we're gonna do a few examples real quick. We got a 60 kilogram skater and a 100 kilogram skater push against one another. The 60 kilogram skater moves to the left at five meters per second. How fast would the 100 kilogram skater be moving? Well, let's use the formula right here that we just wrote down. Zero equals mass times V1 plus mass two uh, times V1 as well. V2, excuse me, V2. Um, so we got zero would equal the mass V1, mass one times V1 plus mass two V2. Moving everything around I'm gonna call the M2 the 100 kilogram skater, so I'm gonna subtract the mass of M1 and V1 over, and I would end up dividing by the mass of M2, and that would give me the volume of skater two, the 100 kilogram skater. So let's plug in our stuff, that would mean that we would have, plugged in we would have negative 60, times the velocity of skater one, which they are going to the left by five meters per second. It is a vector quantity, and sometimes when you see the vector quantities, you will actually care about the direction in these problems, divided by the 100 kilograms, and you would find out that this skater, for the 100 kilogram skater, is going, that would be 300 divided by 100, is going at three meters per second. All right, so what if, the magnitude of the push in the previous 100 is 100 newtons, and that push acted for two seconds. So we're changing a few of the things here. We're saying that the magnitude of the push lasted, so we're kind of moving a little bit of away from momentum and more into impulse territory here. So if that's the case, our force times our time would have to equal M1VF minus M1VI. So we're just dealing with an impulse here. The initial velocity was zero. These guys started at rest. They were like hugging each other, skating next to each other, pushing up against each other. And then they started at rest, so that would be zero. So essentially they had originally these two skaters woo, over here. They were next to each other, starting at zero, and then they started flying off in opposite directions. So that would be the skater one. They had 100 newtons acting on them for two seconds, so that would be 100 newtons times two seconds. And that would equal their mass, 60, times the velocity, which was two, uh, which was unknown. We don't know in this case, V. If we divide by 60, we would end up with a velocity for this skater of 3.3 meters per second. Now this is the 60 kilogram skater. Remember the 60 kilogram skater was moving to the left and is still moving to the left. So we're gonna call it negative 3.3 meters per second for that, okay? So that's the velocity of the first skater, the 60 kilogram skater. What if we had to do this for the other skater. Well, it's the same thing. The 100 kilogram skater has the same scenario happening for them, but it's just in the opposite direction. So they would still have 100 newtons times the two uh, seconds, and they would just have a different mass, 100 
times their velocity. And if we divide that, we find out that it, it, they are going two meters per second for the 100 kilogram skater. And that also should make sense because the 100 kilogram skater has a bigger inertia because they're bigger and that means that it would be a little bit harder for them to move than it would be for the 60 kilogram skater because they're a little bit lighter, they're gonna go a little bit further given the same amount of uh, force for the same amount of time. All right, last one. This one is a doozy and it's a common question. We got 70 kilogram man, he is throwing a 25 kilogram package. That package moves at six meters per second and he's on a boat. Um, this is a very typical question that you see either on a boat or in outer space because if in outer space you're like, you can't swim in outer space because there is no friction. Uh, but you can throw things away from you and that would actually allow you to be propelled or move in the opposite direction. So essentially what we have here is we got this guy on a boat and he's got a box. Boat. When he throws that box this direction, he will be on the boat and the boat will move the opposite direction of the throw which is kind of cool when you think of it because of the conservation of momentum. All right, so with that in mind, we have our problem where our final momentum will have to equal zero, and that zero would be the mass of the man plus the mass of the boat times their velocity of the man and the boat when it's going backwards. See how here we have the man and the boat. That's the mass of the entire thing. But it would have to be added with the mass of the pack or the box times the velocity of the box. Okay, so here we have the boat and the man put together, that momentum will have to be added with the momentum of the box and the boat, the, excuse me, the box and the momentum of the box, excuse me, blah, blah, blah. those put together would equal zero. So this is going to be in the positive direction because it's moving to the right. These guys are gonna be going to the negative direction and they're probably not gonna be moving very fast because it weighs a whole lot more than that box that we threw, all right? So what is the mass of the man and the mass of the boat? Well, that would be 100 kilograms for the boat. And the mass of the man would be 75 kilograms. The velocity of the mass in the boat, we don't know yet. That is what we are looking for. Plus the mass of the box. The mass of the box is um, 25 kilograms. And the mass, uh, the velocity of the box was six meters per second. So if we move this stuff around, we would be able to solve for the velocity of the man and the boat. So if we do six times uh, that, let's move it over. We got 25 kilograms times six meters per second. That would be negative when we subtract it over. And then we would have to divide that by the 75 and the 100 kilograms. So we'd have to divide that by the 75 and the 100 kilograms. And that would give us the velocity of the man and the boat. And if we do all that, we would end up with a negative 0.86 meters per second for the velocity of the boat and the man moving in the opposite direction of the box because the box moved this way, the man and the boat moved the opposite direction to equal and opposite directions, thus keeping all of the conservation of energy and momentum that we've talked about. All right, that's gonna do it for this one. A nice 10 minute video. I'll see you on the next one, everybody. Stay positive, my friends. Bye.